By now, most people in western North Carolina are probably aware that our hemlock trees are threatened by a tiny insect called the hemlock woolly adelgid. This is not a native insect, so unfortunately our native hemlock trees do not have any resistance to it. Since the insect can build up a population very quickly, it has the potential to kill even a large hemlock tree in just a few years, especially if the tree is stressed by other factors such as drought. The insect does not attack any other species of trees. If you have hemlock trees in your yard that you would like to protect from the insect, it's a good idea to inspect your trees as much as twice a year. What you'll be looking for is these white woolly masses all along the twigs or the stems of the trees. Right at the base of all of these needles in each of these little white woolly masses, there is actually a little tiny insect or eggs, depending on the time of year, underneath of that little protective layer. And that insect is sucking the sap out of the tree. You do have the ability to protect many of the hemlock trees if you catch an infestation in time. So for that reason, it is important that you be keeping an eye on your trees um, so that you can catch an infestation early while there is still time to save the tree. So what do you do if you find that your trees are infested? If you have smaller trees, such as perhaps a screening hedge that you're keeping sheared to a size that you can spray, usually no more than about eight feet in size, there are some organic materials that you can use. For example, the insecticidal soap materials or also the various um, products of the horticultural oil. Now, you need to spray these at the right time of year. This insect has two generations, two life cycles per year. The most effective time to treat with the oil or the soap is going to be in the fall, in August, September, or October. This is the time when the second generation has hatched out and the little tiny baby adelgid, to which we call nymphs or crawlers, are crawling on the needles and are easily killed by the insecticide. Um, if you don't get them at that time, a second best time is going to be in the spring from uh, February or March into April up until the time the new growth has come out on the trees. Once you've got that tender green new growth, the material can actually burn uh, those young needles, so you don't want to apply it at that point. It's also going to be very important with these sprays that you get a very good coverage on both tops and bottoms of the needles because the soaps and oils do not have any residual activity, so you're relying on actually contacting the insect with that material. If you have a hedge that you're going to keep to a small enough size, you probably will want to plan to just treat that hedge, spray it um, every fall to keep the adelgids under control. Okay, but what about those large trees that are going to be too big to spray? Well, here you do have a few options. Uh, one would be soil drenches, which in many cases you can do yourself with a systemic insecticide. Um, or perhaps a trunk injection for which you would need to hire a professional. Now you can do a soil drench yourself with a systemic as long as a couple of factors are in your favor. The tree is not located on too much of a slope to be able to pour a liquid material on the ground and not have it run off because you need it to soak directly in around the base of the tree. Uh, your soil of course must not be too rocky to be able to absorb the material. Um, or you would not want to pour a systemic um, around the tree in a location that was very close to a water source such as a creek or a pond, or if it's very close to a well, perhaps 20 feet or so, you would need to make a judgment call on that. In those types of cases, you may need to hire a professional to do trunk injections. Otherwise, you may want to do the systemic soil drench yourself. What you're going to be using is a product that contains a chemical called imidacloprid. You can go to a garden center and find this homeowner version of the uh, Bayer Advanced Tree and Shrub Insect Control. If you have several large trees, however, you may want to look for a more professional strength product. Uh, some of the garden centers will sell this version that uh, it says landscape formula. This is a more concentrated version for which you use about half the amount that you use with the other product. 
there are also now some generic um, brands of imidacloprid. You'll have to go to agricultural supply type warehouse type stores to look for other brand names of the imidacloprid, but those two you can use a smaller amount of. So you'll need to kind of make that determination based on the size of the trees and how much of the product you're going to need. There's a couple of key factors here before you decide to do a soil drench that you need to know. First, it's really critical that you catch the tree while it's healthy enough to be able to take up the systemic material. If the tree has been infested long enough to where it's already dropping some needles or it's lost its good green color and has turned a very gray color, that tree probably is not going to be healthy enough to be able to absorb that systemic material through its root system and translocate it all the way up through the top of the tree. In that case, the only other option you have is to hire a professional to do a spray application of other systemic products which are restricted use materials. They're not something that you could apply yourself, so you would need to hire somebody to do that. The other critical factor is the timing on when you apply your systemic material. It's usually advised that spring or fall are the most desired times because the tree is taking up a lot of water and moving a lot through the system of the tree at that time of year. However, what's even more important is that there be enough moisture in the soil. So do not bother to apply this product to the soil when it's very dry. There has to be adequate moisture already in the ground so the tree is in the mode of taking up water and it needs to remain moist for a while after you apply the product so that the tree is still taking up. So you can apply the imidacloprid products even through the summer months as long as we're having adequate rainfall at the time. Now you're going to need to figure out how much of this material you need to purchase. So before you go to the store, I do recommend that you take your tape measure and you go out and you measure the circumference of the tree. Your homeowner products are going to give you instruction per inch of circumference, that is the measurement around the tree. The more professional strength products are probably going to give you instructions by diameter of tree. So you may want to determine both of those measurements before you go to the store and purchase your products. Did you know that one in five Americans will be diagnosed with skin cancer in their lifetime? Now is the time to begin protecting yourself and your family. Sunscreen should be applied year-round, 30 minutes before going outside. If using sunscreen is a habit you don't want to get into, then dress to protect yourself. The right clothing can block out the sun's harmful rays and should be one of the first lines of defense. Long sleeve shirts with collars and long pants provide the most protection because they leave less skin exposed. Darker colors absorb ultraviolet light better than light colors and provide more protection for your skin. Shoes will also protect your feet more than sandals. Wearing a hat with a 3-inch brim will help in protecting your face, neck, and ears. Don't forget the sunglasses that block 95 to 100 percent of the UV rays. Protecting your eyes may save you from developing cataracts later in life. Remember, if there is a short shadow, you need to seek shade year-round. For more information on sun safety, contact Nancy Ostergaard at the Buncombe County Cooperative Extension, 255-5522. Okay, when you are ready to apply your soil drench, what you want to do is to go up under your tree and about a foot or so out from the tree, you need to be able to get good contact with the soil. So if there is mulch or leaf litter under the tree, you may want to use your rake to just pull that back um, so that you can get right up under the tree. If there is grass growing up around the base of the tree, you might need to use shovel to remove some of that sod so that you can get good soil contact. Then all you need to do is to come about a foot out from the base of the tree and use your shovel or a hoe to make a trench. It doesn't have to be real deep, just an inch or two, enough so that you can gently pour your chemical solution into that trench and have it soak right in around the base of the tree so that you don't have any runoff. If you prefer, you can use a bar to make holes around the 
um, base of the tree into the ground, but don't go any deeper than about three or four inches because you do not want to get the material down too deep and miss the root zone. Once you've got your trench ready, you're now ready to mix your product. We measured the circumference of this tree about four feet off the ground as being 43 inches. Now this product contains 32 ounces in this bottle. Since we need to apply one ounce of the material for every inch of circumference of the tree, that means we're going to need one bottle plus another 11 ounces or about another cup and a third. Now the amount of water that you mix this in isn't all that critical. Generally you can figure it's going to take about two or three gallons of water to go all the way around the base of your tree. So mix up the right amount of chemical for the size of the tree into a couple of gallons of water and then gently go around and pour this all around your trench. Now you can come back with another bucket of just plain water to kind of soak that in. And now you're done. You can fill that trench back in or cover it up with mulch if you want. Uh, again, the most critical factor here is that you do this at a time when there's plenty of moisture in the soil so that the tree can actually take up this material rapidly. Even then, do be aware that it's a slow process for a large tree to absorb this chemical and transfer it all the way up to the top of the tree. It may take a few months or even as much as a year before the material actually works throughout the tree. Also keep in mind that even once the material has worked, the little white woolly masses are going to stay there for a while, so it's often difficult to tell for sure that the chemical has actually done its work. So you may have to wait until next spring after new growth comes out on the tree before you check the tree and determine that there is no new infestation occurring. Uh, just a couple of other important factors on treating trees with hemlock woolly adelgids. Uh, one is that people are often inclined to want to feel like they're helping the tree by fertilizing. It actually is not recommended to apply nitrogen fertilizer to hemlock trees that are infested with hemlock woolly adelgids. It's found that the extra nitrogen actually boosts the reproductive rate of the insect, so it actually helps the insect more than it does the tree. So wait until you've gotten an infestation under control before giving any fertilizer treatments to your tree. The other thing that people often ask about is releasing beneficial insects. There are a couple of predatory beetles that are being used in some of the national forest areas and places like that that actually feed on the adelgids. The problem is this is really not practical in a home grounds type situation. These insects that you would purchase cost more than $2 each, and you would need to release at least a thousand of those insects over about a half of an acre area. And these insects fly very readily, so releasing a bunch of them onto the few trees in your yard um, is not going to be productive because they will quickly move on to other areas. So that type of procedure needs to be done on either a community-wide basis or um, in, in areas like natural forests where we hope the insects will gradually take control of this pest. If you would like this information in uh, the form of a leaflet on controlling hemlock woolly adelgids, feel free to contact the Buncombe County Office of Cooperative Extension and we'll be glad to mail one out to you or tell you where to find it on our website. Mm -hmm.